and we need proactive, open, and ongoing communication constantly within the network and between networks and vertically as well. In terms of our, your, our meeting today, I'd like to s leave you with a few ideas about what I think are important. In terms of basic network structure, I think the most minimum step you might want, the most basic step you might want to consider is creating a lift serve to connect you all very simply through, through email. You could also consider creating a website, but the website must be value added for members. It does create a presence for smaller members, does create more personal mass, and with a greater donation capacity for those without charitable status, but it's got to be able to link existing websites along with those other gaps. Identify the strategic partnerships immediately with strike, not just identify. I think I can say you there, it's very obvious with the universities and colleges in the area. Become a research project to their students. For example, business students could develop and continue to revise any business plan that you develop. Strike an advisory committee. What skills are missing? What connections have to be made? What gaps do you need to fill? And, and create your mem design your membership of your advisory committee that way. And I strongly recommend that in the structuring of that advisory committee, you might want to harness the capital of retiring boomers in the corridor. If at all possible, secure resources for at least one position. And this is a position that often is very difficult to get funding for. And I would again encourage any members of the audience from the funding community that this is really in critical capacity for any network formation. One person devoted to ongoing communications, the documents, and the websites. Most of our group, the groups in the corridor are mainly volunteer, and this is, a, a, I think, the minimum resource that needs to be put in place. And then identify the strategic alliances with adjacent communities, and in particular, especially Indigenous communities, who would bring such a critical dis and different historical and cultural perspective to the development of the corridor. One of the things that you may want to look at is, is working with the Feast of Fields along the corridor, developing a whole Feast of Fields that's led out of Vancouver now on Granville Island. Farmers markets, work with artists, have an art along the corridor, annual event. In terms of an annual network cycle, what's important is, as I've discussed, develop a collective vision. vision. Determine strategic imperatives. And I want to pause here to talk about some discussions I've had with former political members. Without res with respect to strategic imperatives, I think environmental groups are now at a junction in their evolution where you have to we have to decide whether to, to continue to be part of the problem or become part of the solution. We are at risk of being irrelevant if we do not develop strategic priorities and imperatives, especially now that money is starting to flow, begin to flow to environmental issues. And we also have a strategic imperative to ensure that this time the environmental, they, we do not slip off the political agenda and become second or third behind economics. This is what we refer to as a third wave of environmentalism, and this time I think we're we have to be more strategic to keep us high on the agenda. Pick your top three, pri your po top three priorities and stick with them. And picking your, 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 your issues means there's going to be some degree of compromise. There is no perfect world. Become a focus and scale of interest to funders through a more coherent analysis of the problem. Secure funding. And this is an iterative process. You repeat the cycle annually, hopefully with, I hope you agree to meet at least once a year annually. I'd now like to share with all due respect some potential concrete actions that I think you could be involved in. Develop a business plan and a social ecological network map. Map the networks, and, and through network mapping, then you get to identify who the critical nodes are, who are the people. It's far more efficient to start communicating instead of trying to communicate with everyone equally. Use your nodes for communicating, and then they will communicate back to their respective uh, constituencies of the members of the network. This could be a possible research project. You could have students at Quest University or the colleges in the area do this with you. Identify the nodes and support them. I'd like to suggest that you pick one project that covers all four of the mandates identified in your survey. Sustainability, fisheries, watershed awareness, education, and education and recreation. As well, I'd like to suggest, highly suggest that when you pick your three areas, pick something that's short, medium, and long term. We all need success. And something that's really doable, we often miss the small meaningful steps in the search for the big fixed solution. I understand from your survey as well that 57 of the groups offer programming. Perhaps you could coordinate your program 
have a brochure in all the hotels in Vancouver about the programs offered. And I'm sure that some of our, our one of our staff members at Aurora Roads, who's done the same thing at Roads, would be delighted to work with you and help you in, in developing that brochure if one doesn't already exist. Many of you develop government as a challenge. I would suggest again, pick one government procedure or regulation to try and change and stick with it until it is changed. I've, I've been involved in so many meetings in all sectors of society where people talk about, we've got to find the perfect framework. We've got to you know, develop the perfect indicators for sustainable development. Well, we still don't have any indicators for sustainable development at the national or provincial level. They've been developed, but they haven't been adopted by the mainstream. So let's start picking the issues off one at a time and solving them. Many, again, many of you in the, your survey identified a lack of planning. I believe the corridor has the potential to be a showcase for the province of British Columbia, or equally could be a Disneyland in Florida without integrated planning. You may wish then to develop an integrated community sustainability plan for the co corridor. See if you could then access the gas tax rebate money and again, my research team would be delighted to work with you on this as we have developed a tool and are working with two other BC communities at the moment. What, but what does integrated community planning look like? Long-term planning, the, most, the communities that are more on the pathway or on the road, pardon the pun, to sustainable development are those that have a plan in place that's 100 years out, not 20 or 30, but 100 years, with an annual cycle of revision every two to three years. It involves integrated planning, the reconciliation definition of sustainable development that you must equally consider the ecological, social, and economic at the same time. Systems planning. What is the boundary? What are the adjacent communities that the corridor's sustainability or ecological integrity is, is dependent on? How do you involve them in your process? You have to plan for resilience. Hopefully communities can be involved and it can be adaptive. We need redundancy, especially in critical infrastructure diversity and we have to become learning communities, which is uh, where I think environmental educators have a key role to play in determining what exactly is a learning community. In conclusion, I'd like to share one last thought with you. All communities and regions need to begin discussing what characteristics of your place are important to sustain and for whom, combined with key questions about the scale of development, are there limits to our development, including the biophysical? and what kinds of diversity are important to us to sustain for the other critters and for us, for I believe our very humanity is at stake. Thank you very much, and I'd be delighted to, to entertain any questions and, and have more of a dialogue rather than me standing here at the podium.